Father, there's one soul in this room that doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. I pray, God, today might be that day of their salvation. Lord, that you would save them before it's eternally too late. And Almighty God, we lift them to you. And Father, for those who are your children that are following in disobedience, I pray, God, today as we talk about how good you are to us, I pray, Father, we'd repent and lay aside our filthiness, lay aside our wickedness. And Lord, we'd run the race for you. We'd run it, Lord, for your honor and your glory. And Almighty God, most of all, today we want to thank you that you began a work in us and you will see it under completion. We thank you for that salvation to sinners so undeserving. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we look at this psalm this morning, this is a psalm of David, and he's basically, he's praising God, he's blessing God uh, for the benefits that God gives to his children. Now I want you to understand something, Old Testament or New Testament, we all get saved the same way. You've got to put your faith and your trust in God, in God's way of salvation. In the New Testament we live in today, Jesus Christ has come, he died on the cross. He went to the grave. He arose again that third day. And salvation is not by works, but it is by grace of God. It's by faith. Amen. Amen. We don't get saved by any religious work. Y'all know that this morning, don't you? Well, I just want to remind you, because if you're in this room today, and you think you're going to heaven because you're a church member, or you think you're going to heaven because you've always been in church, or even always been in this church, or because you've been baptized, or because you signed a card or prayed a prayer. That does not get you to heaven. Repentance and put your trust and faith in Christ's finished work is what gets you to heaven. Amen. Now, for those of us that are saved today, there is a list of benefits that are given to us. Now, most of y'all are working, still working, or some of you are in school and you're planning on working. You think it's good to get out of school and get a job. That's because you're dumb as a hammer. Amen. You'll learn. You'll learn. There are some of you that have retarded out, right? Amen. Or retired out, whatever it is. So you're not in that force, workforce anymore. And you're glad of it, I can almost guarantee you, right? But for those that do work, what do we work for? We work to earn money to pay for our family, don't we? And when we go and we look for a job, and if we don't like that job, we try to find a better job and provide better for our family. What do we look for? We look for benefits, don't we? Well, I want you to understand something. Just being a child of God, you've got more benefits than any job can ever give you. And I want you to know that your benefits are not just on this earth, but your benefits are eternal. How many of y'all read in the Bible where it tells us that one of these days the Lord's going to call us to Himself? And we're going to be with the Lord forever. We're going to be with the Lord. Praise God. You talk about a benefit. We're going to be with our Savior. Now I know this to be a fact. Because I've been doing this a long time. And I can tell you that on Sunday mornings. From Sunday one week to Sunday another week. There might be one Sunday. You're just as excited as you can be. About the fact that Jesus is coming back. You're going to be with Him. And the next Sunday you just really are just not into it. How many of y'all agree with me on that? Hey, your feelings change, your emotions change, but our God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the benefits that God gives us does not have anything to do with how you feel about it. It has everything to do with what God has said about it. We have benefits, eternal, and we have some benefits while we're here alive. Look at what old David said. He said, bless the Lord my soul, and all that is within me bless His holy name. By the way, today is Sunday morning. This is the Lord's day. This is the day we've gathered together to just thank God and praise God. So if you're saved in this place this morning, why don't you just thank God just a little bit and say, thank you, Lord, for my salvation. Are you saved? Then thank you, Lord, for my salvation. I was deserving of hell and so were you. But somebody came to me and told me about Jesus. The seed was planted in my heart. If you're saved, the seed was planted in your heart. And then somebody watered that seed. And then it came to fruition. The Spirit of God drew us, called us, wooed us out of this world, and showed us the truth about Jesus. And we responded to that. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank God for my salvation. I want to thank God for your salvation. Even if you don't want to praise Him this morning. 
One of these days you're going to get to heaven, you're going to look back, and you're going to wish like everything in church, you would have just jumped up and went, Woo! I'm saved! Amen. By the way, Virginia, you got to let it out. It hurts you if you leave it in there. <laughs> so when I get going, don't be ashamed of our God this morning. Don't be ashamed of thanking Him. Don't be ashamed of worshiping Him. And don't be ashamed to just lift up them hands today or go thank the Lord at any moment and at any time. Because we were on our way to hell. But God saved us. We're going to bless Him. He said, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. In verse number 3. I want you to look at the first one. Is this? Our God. You talk about a benefit. Our benefit is that God forgiveth, and the next word is A-L-L. -L. Our God forgiveth all thine iniquities. God didn't just forgive you what you did in the past. God forgives you what you're doing now, and God's already forgiven you. It's under the blood of the Lamb of God. Sin is taken care of, and the penalty of sin is taken care of. The wages of sin is death. When you were working in the world for the devil, you were earning wages. And the benefit that you had was that you were going to die and go straight to hell. But when we got saved, we got a new benefit. And the benefit is we're forgiven. Amen. Let me just put it another way. You might have yesterday have said the wrong thing, done the wrong thing, been the wrong place, acted wrong, but I want you to know the blood of Jesus was just as good a thousand years ago as it is a hundred years ago, as it was the day before yesterday, as it was yesterday, as it is today, as it will be tomorrow. Amen. The blood of Jesus washes our sins. Amen. Amen. Watch this if you will. Flip over to Matthew chapter number 9. Who is it that's our Redeemer? Who is it that's our Savior? It's none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. It's God manifest in the flesh. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And when He saves us, He saves us to the uttermost. When He saves us, He gives us eternal life. We have eternal life. And that eternal life is the life of Christ. It has no beginning. It has no ending. While we can look back and say there was a day that I repented and put my trust in Christ, we have eternal life because our life is the very life of Almighty God and He had no beginning and He has no end. Thank God. Who is it that can save? Jesus. Look at this. Matthew chapter number 9. Look at verse number 1. There was a man that had palsy and God's about to forgive his sin and heal him. Notice this, if you will. He entered into a ship and passed over and came to his own city. And behold, they brought him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, I want you to understand what I'm about to read. There were a bunch of Pharisees. There were a bunch of religious folks around. And they got as mad as a hornet. They didn't get mad because the man got up off of the bed. They didn't get mad because there was a restoration back to his soul, to his, to his body. But they got mad because this man, Jesus, had the audacity to say, Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. There's only one that can forgive sin, and that's God. Hey, we're not Catholics. You can come to me and tell me all the sin you got in the world. I love to hear good stories. I mean, I will write a book about you one day when I'm gone. Trust me. I mean, you can tell me anything you want to. There's nothing you're going to tell me that surprises me anymore. And every time I say that, there's another. <laughs> but I want you to know this, friend. Y'all listening to me? What they got mad about was because Jesus said, Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. There's none that can forgive sins but God. And if anybody says Jesus never said he was God, then you're a liar. You've never read the Bible. Because look at this right here. And behold, certain of the scribes, said within themselves, this man, blasphemous. And Jesus knowing their thoughts. Hey, they didn't even have to voice it. Jesus knows it. By the way, sitting here today, God already knows all there is to know about your life. He knows your sin. You ain't hiding nothing from God. He knows the thought process. By the way, there's not a sin we ever commit that don't start in your brain. It, don't start, it starts in your thought process, right? God already knows that. Here's these men saying that this man blasphemed. Jesus is a blasphemer. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil 
in your hearts. For whether it is easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say arise and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. This story was given to us in the Bible so that we can understand that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. He is God manifest in the flesh. And He, and He alone, has the power to forgive sins. No man's going to forgive Him. No priest is going to forgive Him. We have a great high priest, which is Jesus Christ. Not only is He a high priest, He is the payment, the satisfaction, the penalty paid in full for our sins. Amen. Amen. On the cross of Calvary, He became our sin that we might become His righteousness. It is Jesus that forgives. Amen. Flip on over to Ephesians. Let me show you something else. Ephesians chapter number 1. The forgiveness is according to His grace. I want to thank God right now that things aren't forgiven by the measure of my grace. Because I don't have grace like God's got grace. I don't even know what that's about. I've experienced God's grace, but there's no way on God's green earth I could give you the grace that God gives me. Because when you do me wrong, I'm never going to forget it. I'm going to hold it against you. I might forgive you, but I am living in sinful flesh. And trust me when I tell you, I'm not ever going to forget it. Amen. And given my dispensation towards uh, sin, there may come a day when I repay. Because I am living in sinful flesh. How about you? And that's not good, brethren. But let's just be real today. Ephesians chapter number 1. Look at verse 3 through 7. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Hey, isn't it good today that our God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings? We have all the spiritual blessings that God could muster up to give us. We got them all in Jesus Christ. You're not, you don't have some of God's blessings. You got all of them. You don't have some of the spiritual blessings. You got all of them. Stop trying to go into the religious world and try to find some other experience outside of the mercy and the grace and the love of Almighty God. Experiences come, experiences go. Our salvation and our satisfaction with Jesus Christ is not based upon experience. It's based upon the fact that Jesus paid it all and we're not worthy. But He still paid it all. And we have all the spiritual benefits. Can I get an amen, church? Amen. According as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before Him in love. Are y'all listening? We have a responsibility to get in all those spiritual blessings. And that is that we live holy and we live in love. You're looking at a walking failure. I'm looking at some sitting failures. Because I can tell you right now, you ain't as holy as sometimes you think you be. I know I'm not. I am a sinful, wicked, vile wretch. That's all I am in this flesh. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all know it. And you love me anyhow. Praise God. Some people find out and they leave. <laughs> people think the pastor's like so, supposed to be up here. You know what? I've read the Bible. No, I ain't supposed to be up here because if I'm up here, I'm going to fall off and hurt myself real bad. <laughs> You know what we are? We are all equal at the foot of the cross. On our face. On our knees. Before a holy God. On our face. Amen. We're equal. Now notice this if you will. He said, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the beloved. Listen to me very carefully. We are accepted in the beloved. You know why? Because God Almighty paid the price for us. God Almighty. Now I am of the theology that the church is what's predestined. I don't believe for one minute there's any one person in this room that you were born predestined for heaven. As a matter of fact, everybody in this room was born destined for hell. Because you had the sin nature of old Adam. Because the sin of Adam was upon you. And you were destined for hell. But somebody told you the gospel. And you responded to the love of God. It is the goodness of God that leadeth men to repentance.
repentance. And you repented because the Spirit of God showed you the truth. Amen? Amen. And you repented and you put the truth, your trust in God, and you believe the truth of Almighty God. And now you are accepted of Him. Thank God for that. Amen. You're not accepted because you were good, little boys and girls. You are not accepted by God because you're super spiritual and all sanctified. No, my friend, let me tell you something. You're accepted by God because you accepted the payment of the blood of the Lamb of God to be applied to your life. And when you accepted that payment, then you are satisfied to God because Jesus Christ, it was His blood. And He is the satisfaction of the salvation of all of mankind. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but Baptist people ought to get excited about that. I said Baptist people really ought to get excited. Come on! Don't make me the only one up here that's talking about being a sinful, wicked wretch and being excited about the fact that I'm saved by grace. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm accepted by God. Amen. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow the world may dump a heavy load on me. And tomorrow... I may not feel like I'm saved. And tomorrow, I may not act so saved. But I am saved because of the blood of Jesus. I am accepted of God by the blood of Jesus. Do you remember in our text? He said he understood about our flesh. God knows! God knows. God knows. That's not an excuse to sin. But when you do sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous, because we are not righteous on our Everybody with me this morning? Hey, I'm still in the first one. We're talking about being forgiven. <laughs> Look what else he said. Look at the next verse. It says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, redeemed in the blood of Jesus Christ. His blood paid for our sin. The wages of sin's death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The next one he said was something right along the lines. After you're forgiven, God said He'll heal you of all your diseases. Now don't bust all Pentecostal charismatic in here. That's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about name it, claim it. That's not what God's talking about. What's the number one illness that man has? He has a nature that's corrupt. He has a nature that's sending him to death. He has a nature. Because of your nature, your sin nature, you are going to die. It is sin in this world that makes people sick. God made this world perfect. God made the world perfect and the man in the world perfect. But man willfully chose to sin. And there is a sin curse because of Adam's sin upon the entire earth. The entire earth. And so because of that sin curse, there is disease in the world. There is death in the world. But I want you to know there's coming a day, brother, when you're not going to have illness anymore. I won't have to wear these stupid glasses anymore. I will be able to walk outside the rain like normal people. I don't even remember what that's like. <laughs> I don't know if it's raining in heaven, but nevertheless... We'll be on the millennial earth, rain with, on the, with the Lord for a thousand years. It'll probably rain here, amen? Yeah. <laughs> for a thousand years on this earth, amen. I won't have these stupid glasses. Amen. 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 I'm not going to be racked by pain in my body anymore. Hallelujah. Y'all listen to me? I'm telling you there's coming a day. Now, I believe every time we have an illness, every time we have a sickness, Every time we have an ache or pain, we ought to go to our God and say, God, let me tell you all about it. Yeah. Lord, if it be thy will, let this pass from me. If it be thy will, Lord, would you heal my body? If it be thy will, would you take the disease away? Because I'm telling you, our God is still in the healing business. Our God is still in the correcting business, the fixing up business. And there are some people in this earth that get a healing touch of God, and you can't explain it. But the same fact of the matter is, the way it works today is the same way it worked when Jesus walked on this earth. There were those that got healed, and there were those that did not. Because Jesus did not heal every sick person that was alive on the earth. You think He did? You're a special kind of student. Amen. Amen. Now 
want you to understand something. God may not touch you on this side of the grave. But oh, my friends, I want you to know this life is like a vapor. It's only for a fleeting moment. And we get to leave this world. We get to leave the sin-cursed earth that we are dwelling on. And one day, we will be with Jesus. And when we are with Jesus, there is no more infirmity. There's no more dying. There's no more sin. Let me let the Bible tell you. Over in Revelation chapter number 21, look at this if you will. Revelation 21 verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first earth and the first heaven, or first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will be with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more crying one day. He'll wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death. The wages of sin is death. No more sin. No more sin. No more sin. And no more dying. Wages of sin is death. That's gone. That old sin curse is gone. Neither sorrow. You'll never have a sorrowful day. Another day in your life. I can tell you this, that the morning that I got the call that my dad died was one of the most sorrowful days in my life. But my daddy being washed in the blood of the Lamb, one of these days going to be an eternal good morning and eternal hallelujah. I'm going to see him again. We're going to walk on them streets of gold. We're going to praise God together. We're going to shout together. We're going to worship together. We're going to be together. There's no sorrow. No more sorrow nor crying. I don't know what's got you down. I don't know what's got you broken. I don't know what's got you hearty. But I can tell you this. All of it's going to be gone one day. You're going to be in the presence of God. There's no more dying. There's no more tears. There's no more sadness and sorrow. There is no more crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. That word pain means both physical and mental. There will be absolutely nothing that brings you pain in this world. I can't even imagine it. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Some of y'all walking with little sticks to help you walk. I'm going to tell you to take that stick and beat the devil over the head with it. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all, you got to put on liniments and ointments till you smell like a gasoline factory. You got to take so many pills. Come on, y'all. Take pills to bring your blood up. Take pills to take it down. Come on, y'all. You take pills to make you awake and pills to make you sleep. All at the same time. It ain't no wonder you're schizophrenic. But there's coming a day. Oh, oh, come on. All of it's gone. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more dying. I'm telling you what, not only that, the former things are all passed away. Let me tell you something. You and I have got some heartaches and memories. There's no hurts like church hurts. And probably most of you in this room, you've been through church hurts. I mean, brothers and sisters let you down. Pastors let you down. Come on. Hey, hey we're just people, right? And people let people down. But I want you to know that all the former things are going to pass away. God's not going to let you remember any of that garbage anymore. You're not going to remember that person who lied to you. You're not going to remember that act. You're not going to remember the one that talked bad about you behind your back. It's all gone. The one that mocked you and make fun of you. The ones that, that slander your name. You're not going to remember any of it because it's all gone. You talk about a benefit. I'm telling you a benefit. You talk about being healed. I'm going to tell you there's coming a day we're going to be mentally sound. We're going to be physically sound. We're going to be emotionally sound. And bless God, we're going to be financially okay. I've read this book and I can tell you this. In the new heaven and the new earth, there's fruit on the trees. There's lots to eat. There's a fountain of fresh water flowing out from under the throne of Almighty God. We have got it made in the shade. Made in the shade. We get our eyes on this world. We get our eyes on our problems. We get our eyes on the way people let us down. We get our eyes on all the way. Church is falling apart all around us. I don't know what happened, but church ain't church no more. It's falling apart all around us. It's becoming some kind of light show, some kind of musical event, 
some kind of little ditty and some little, just little fluffy stuff. Man, I'm telling you, we live in a hard world and we live in a harsh environment. We live in a sin-cursed world. We need to stop for just a little bit and focus on the benefits of being saved and realize this is not all there is. We've got a whole lot more to look forward to. Woo! Not only that, he said this, verse number four, who redeemeth my life from destruction. That word redeemed means he bought us back. My friend, the blood of Jesus bought me back. What did he buy me from? This verse tells us from destruction. I don't know about you, but I'm still saved from hell. Amen. I tell you what, I talk to people, I know y'all do too. And you talk to people and you ask them, talk about salvation, are you saved? Well, yeah, I'm saved. I, I, I believe in Jesus. I prayed that prayer. What are you saved from? Yeah. Well, I didn't know I was supposed to be saved. What do you mean to myself? Saved from what? What are you saved from? Hell is still real. And we get saved from the wages of sin. We get saved from the penalty of hell. That's what we got saved from this church. Then he, I got to hurry up. <laughs> then he went on to say this, who crowned thee with the loving kindness and tenderness. That word crowned has the idea to encircle a roundabout for protection or for financial gain. And I want you to understand our God crowneth us. My friend, you and I, one of these days we're going to be given a crown, but I believe with all my heart whatever crown we're going to get is to be taken off and cast at the feet of Jesus because we didn't earn any one of them. It's all to the glory of God because He started the work in us. We, whatever we do, whatever good's in us, it's for His good will and His good pleasure. It's to bring glory. It's to bring honor. Whatever you find yourself to do, we're to do it with all of our heart and all of our soul to the glory of Almighty God. Amen. I tell you what, whether you win a soul winner's crown, you get a martyr's crown, whatever the crowns you may win, I believe there's coming a day at the very sight of Jesus Christ we're going to be on our face and we're going to be thanking God. And we're going to take those crowns and just cast them at His feet. Because He's worthy. He's worthy. He encamped around about us. My friend, He is my shield. He's my buckler. He's my fortress. He's my high tower. When I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place, it's my God that leaves the 99 and comes to where I am. And He rescues me. You talk about being crowned. The greatest crown I could ever think to win for the glory of God is a soul winner's crown. Maybe a martyr's crown. But whatever crown you get, whatever crown I get, and, uh, it's not because this flesh deserved it. It's because He did it in us and through us. Because He surrounds us. He lifts us. He protects us. And He leads us. He guides us. He does it in us and through us. Woo! One of these days I get to lay it at His feet. Oh, praise God. Let me tell you something. One of these days, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. I know sometimes you don't feel like it. I know sometimes you just feel like, oh, God. I know some of you are praying for sweet death right now. Oh, God, please, I'd rather be dead than live alive on this earth. But I want you to know something. You ain't dead. You ain't done. you got to suck it up and drive on. God's still got work for you to do. God's got something for you to do. You keep on praying. You keep on talking. You keep on magnifying Jesus. You keep on living for His glory. Just let Him surround you. Let Him work in you. Let Him work through you. Let Him lift you up. Let Him build you up. Let Him work you up. And let Him fill you up. So you go in this world. Let Him pour you Come on, church. Come on, church. He's crowned. Here's the last one. Satisfied. Look what he says. I got to hurry. Who satisfied my mouth with good things so that thy youth renewed like eagles. Flip over to Psalms 23. Listen to this very carefully. You talk about being satisfied. I want you to know something. This old boy, since I've been saved, there have been times in my life I've got my eyes off of Jesus. I felt like God was nowhere around. God was nowhere to be found. I felt like I wasn't saved. I felt like I didn't hurt. I wasn't good enough. I felt like a whole lot of stuff. But that don't change the fact that God's never moved. God's never changed. God's never lied to me. God's still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And after I get my stop wearing my rectum for a necklace, get my eyes back on the true sunshine. Come on, y'all. And I start realizing how good God is. And I just go ahead and start bragging on God and thanking God. 
I want you to know he'll fill me up. Yes. He'll fill you up as well. And it ain't about emotion. It's not about feeling. It's about the fact. God did it. Look at Psalms 23. I love to read this. Listen, I'll tell you this. I used to go, I used to have a nursing home ministry, and I'd go into the nursing homes, and, and I'd go into them room, room to room to room to room, and I'd read scripture, and I always read Psalms 23, because everybody knows it. One day I walked in this room, and this little old lady was laying there, I said, ma'am, would you like for me to pray for you, or, or read the Bible to you? And she said, oh yes, honey, that would be really sweet of you. So she's laying there in the, in, in the bed, and I, I just start reading Psalm 23, and she starts weeping and sighing. I stopped. I said, what's wrong, ma'am? She said, I'm Catholic, and they only read that to you when you're dying. <laughs> my response, listen, no joke, my response was, if you're Catholic, ma'am, you are dying. But let me, let me tell you about Jesus. I can tell you how you know you can live. Come on. Hey, I grew up Catholic. Catholics are not Christians. Catholics are religious. They need Jesus. Y'all still with me? Yeah. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Let me, tell, let me ask you this. Is the Lord your shepherd? Because if the Lord is your shepherd, by our very nature, we want to run from the shepherd occasionally. We think the grass is greener on the other side. If the Lord's your shepherd every now and then, you're going to think that there's some other way that's better. And you're going to try to follow that way, and you're going to find out that the Lord is a, not only a shepherd, but he's a real good shepherd. Yeah. He'll leave the 99, come where you are, and he's going to pull you out that, with that shepherd's staff, and then he's going to chase you with that chastening rod that that little shepherd carries. And I want you to know when he does it, he doesn't do it to break you down and destroy you. He does it to draw you closer to himself because he's a good shepherd. Some of you have been there. I've been there. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. He's mine. Look at all these personal pronouns. You want to brag on something? Brag on Jesus. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes. Yes. He's my shepherd. I don't listen to the deacons. I don't listen to the Sunday school teachers. I don't listen to y'all. I listen to the Lord. Yes. Amen. He's my shepherd. Yes. We're going to go the Lord's way or we ain't going at all. Amen. Yes. That's just the way it is here. Y'all all right with that, aren't you? Yes. It's been that way for 15 years. I reckon you'll be that way for 15 more <laughs> More. Amen. Come on. Listen to me. The, the Lord's my shepherd. I shall not want. When the Lord is my shepherd, I don't have the need of one. No. You know, sometimes I have a desire for that, which isn't good. But the Lord's my shepherd. What I really needed was to have my soul saved. What I really needed was to have the blood applied. My God did it. I don't have to want for nothing. You know why? Because I got all the benefits. Almighty God. Are y'all with me now? I mean, are you really with me this morning? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That word make it doesn't mean that he forces me to. It means that he made me, created me to lie down in green pastures. You want to know something? When I was lost, I wanted to run to every bar there was. I wanted to run around. I wanted to steal stuff. Cuss, carry on. Come on. I wanted to destroy stuff, break stuff, and hurt people. But when I got saved, I become a new creature in Christ. I was made new. I was made whole. And He made me to lie down in green pastures so He could fill my soul. Yeah. Just like that old maniac who could dare. Yeah. Running around naked in the tombs, cutting himself, breaking chains and ropes. Yeah. But the next thing you see after He got saved, He was seated and clothed and in His right mind. He was praising his God. Come on, y'all. God made him to lie in green pastures. God made us to lie in the green pasture. You know what it doesn't say? He didn't make you to do this and make you to do that. He made you to lie down. Number one, you need a refreshing of God where you can do any work for him. You need to remember his benefits. You need to bask on that a little bit. You need to just go ahead and eat that green grass of the goodness of Almighty God and let him fatten you up and fill you up. Then he'll give you what you need to do. Look what he says. He maketh me to lie down beside, he leadeth me beside still waters. If anybody's ever farmed sheep, you know that sheep will not go by running water and drink. They'll lay down at the edge of them. They're scared to death of them. You know something? You and I have water. It's the Spirit of God that's been given to us. Amen? We have the Spirit of God. We've got living water. And I want you to know, 
It's that Holy Spirit of God that, that brings you peace beyond any understanding. Peace when nobody else can understand why you've got peace because you've got the still waters of the Holy Spirit of God. Oh, my friend, what a God we serve. Oh, it gets better, it gets better. Y'all still with me? I feel like preaching for days. He restored, look, he restored my, he restored my soul. I'm going to tell you this. You mess up, you sin, you walk away from God, God doesn't turn, he, he don't do like this. He restores you. Our God's in restore. There's some of you sitting in this room, I guarantee you right now, because I've been where you are. You're sitting in this room and you think, I have walked away from God. There's no way God can love me. My heart's changed. My life has changed. Everything. You, there's no way God can love me. Let me tell you something. The Lord God Almighty loves you the same today as He ever has. Your sin has not affected Him one bit. He's paid the price and He will restore you. And when He restores you, He restores you to His glory, not your glory. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. We are to walk in order to glorify God. Now look at the, rest, the last three verses. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I kind of stop. You ain't going to die. You're not going to die! Your body expires! But you have everlasting life. You're not going to die. That's right. You live forever. We only walk through the shadow of the valley of death. And I'm telling you what, it's just a shadow. Last time I looked, ain't a shadow going to do a thing to me. A shadow can't do nothing but give me a little fright. But it can't touch me, it can't change me, it can't hurt me, yeah. and dang sure it can't kill me. Yeah. I'm going to live forever. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For thou art with me. I will never leave thee, yeah. nor forsake thee. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Yeah. It comforts me to know when I go wrong, my God will leave the 99, rescue me. He will break me, yeah. but he will bring me to himself to love me back to restoration. Yeah. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. I've got lots of accusers. Pastor Paul, you're a weirdo. Pastor Paul, you're a freak. Pastor Paul, you're just too biblical. Pastor Paul, you're just too fundamental. Pastor Paul, you're too old-fashioned. Well, suck it up, buttercup. I ain't changing for you. God's going to prepare a table before me. Yeah. I'm going to sit there and enjoy the blessings of God while all the scoffers of God are cast yeah. into the lake of fire. Yeah. I'm telling you what, we're going to be around the marriage supper of the Lamb. The Lord's going to gird Himself and serve us. And after that happens, there's going to come a great white throne and all of them scoffers and liars and all of them ones that mock and make fun of Jesus and mock and make fun of us for the way we believe, they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Amen. And God not going to be affected one bit. Yeah, that's right. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup, my cup runneth over. That's the satisfaction of all that. He fills you up to pour you out. Look at the last verse and we're done this morning. We're going to have an invitation. And the invitation is simply this. If you're lost, you don't know Jesus, you better get saved today. Because this, this, this old mud ball is on a short spiral, short span to hell. And you need to get saved. And there's no guarantee of you it tomorrow. There's no guarantee that you'll make it back tonight. There's no guarantee of anything. You need Jesus right now. And God, listen, you don't get saved when you want to. You get saved when the Holy Spirit of God is dealing with you. And if the Holy Spirit of God is dealing with you, this is the day of salvation. Today is your day. Get saved now. Get saved now. Trust Him now. I'll take the Bible and introduce you to Christ. But for those of you that are saved in this place, listen. If you just want to come up here and you just want to pour it out to Jesus, you just want to thank Him for His goodness, or you just got to pour out some heartache and heartbreak, the altar's open for you. If the Holy Spirit of God is tugging on your heart string, it ain't nobody else's business. It's your business in God. You just make your way to an old-fashioned altar where God can offer you. At that old-fashioned altar, look what He said. Sure, of a surety, as a fact, a matter of fact, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Hey, they may not be real close. 
But they'll follow you all the days of your life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Say it with me, church. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's the benefit of being saved, washed in the blood of God Almighty. So I'll stand this morning, Miss Pam, if you come.